Hey everyone, my name is Matt Romanchik, and I am the founder and host of The Conscious Vibe. This is the podcast where we explore the connections between creativity, music, science, spirituality, ancient wisdom, modern wisdom, all sorts of things, everyday life, and how people are passionate and interested in those things and trying to act more consciously in the world. I would like to welcome you to this conscious earth. Shout out to John Arn for that awesome opening track. If you would like to hear that and all the other music featured on this show, you can find it all on my YouTube channel and SoundCloud. Just search The Conscious Vibe and you'll find all of that. Actually, on YouTube, it's called The Conscious Summer at the moment, but that'll change back to The Conscious Vibe. If you'd like to join in on the conversation, find our Facebook group, The Conscious Vibe Tribe and join what's over 100 people now in sharing what we have to offer and just connecting people like us together. It's funny because I feel like people like you and me think that you know there aren't a lot of people talking about or thinking about this kind of stuff out there, but it's actually growing. There, there are a lot. Even though it's, it's been said a lot that the consciousness of the planet is awakening, it, it really is. <laughs> Like, I guarantee you, in 10 years, this kind of stuff is going to be very popular, and people like you and me are going to be like, really? We've, we've been, like, <laughs> with this since the beginning, and people are going to call us hipsters. But, um, really, I was, I was actually at a bar last night, and I, I rarely ever go to bars because it's just not my thing, but I had these kinds of conversations, incredibly deep, moving conversations, with probably seven or eight different people throughout the night and then they just came up completely naturally it it wasn't even like we had to do small talk anyway this is the third and final part in the series with shamanic practitioner alvaro romeo he's a great guy we talk about peruvian shamanism and just how to be a better person in everyday life how to connect to oneself how to connect to mother earth our podcast is sponsored by a company called Berg Superfoods. You can find all of their products on their site, apologenesis.com, which features organic, natural healing food, real food. And that's why I support someone like them, because when it comes to sponsorship, I don't want just to be taking sponsorship from anybody. It has to be something I know I believe in. And in times like this, something I really believe in is taking care of the planet, taking care of our bodies, in general, a respect for the sacred and a respect for life. And so green, real, live, raw, organic food, that's something I support. So if you want to support that too, you can get 10% off using the coupon code STAYCONSCIOUS at their website, apologenesis.com. All right, let's get into this, brothers and sisters.
people would probably ask how this sort of thing can just benefit our daily lives. You know, someone like my mother or my father or people who might be kind of interested in this stuff, but they're going, ah, I don't really know. Do you think they would benefit from exploring this aspect of things? Or do you think it's reserved for people who really feel some sort of calling towards it? It, it all depends on what it is. And everybody has the ability to to seek out what they what they want and what they believe in. I don't suggest anybody ever to force something on another person. And in due time, if a person is like, you know what, I'm kind of interested in shamanism, let them take that path in that journey. Doesn't mean that they have to, but if a person is interested, they're going to open that door. The door shouldn't be open for them, ever. A lot of people, and myself included, and you've probably experienced this too, we start down some sort of, let's call it alternative spiritual path. Just anything that's different from the paradigm that is dominant in our current culture. And that could mean you and me living in New Jersey or someone who's a Hindu in India or someone who's you know, Muslim. People from different cultures, if they're open to this kind of thing and they're feeling called, are going to experience a lot of doubt and probably also not only doubt within themselves, but doubt from their parents or siblings or friends, people making fun of them, or just other religious dogmas tr trying to keep them from exploring their calling. How did you deal with that sort of thing and what would you say to those people? My experience with that is it's all about the ego. When a person starts out on a spiritual path or is curious about something, you want validation, you want the approval from those around you. You want people to accept you. You want um, you know, if you have a you know a pretty cool experience, you want to share it. And I've learned that this is a it's a solo journey. You don't need to share it with everybody around you because not everybody's going to respect or understand. You want to hold on to that power for yourself and not let that ego get out there to dictate the journey because that is usually what a lot of people run into is struggles with their own ego right to try and use the experience for some sort of personal gain correct like one thing i wanted to going back to ayahuasca is that beautiful plant medicine teaches us how, how to die and she teaches us how to live And she teaches us how to be able to experience the death of our ego. Yeah. And through life, and I've and I've seen it many times, and I and I've had to learn that for myself through these experiences that I don't share jack shit with anybody <laughs> unless I'm feeling guided to. You know, throughout this podcast, I have not really shared one personal story or experience about, I mean, a couple little ones, but I really keep that to myself yeah. because same. why do I want to give away my power? Why do I want to give away the power of that experience? Why do I want to be judged? And I really don't care what you or anybody thinks of me because I ultimately know that this is what makes me happy, what, what makes me fulfilled, where my journey is going. And I only surround myself with people who are going to understand or accept me. If someone in my life is not understanding or is toxic, I'm sorry, but yes, I love you and I will always <laughs> be 
a friend to you or whatever it is, but I'm not going to share my personal spiritual experiences with you. And they don't need to know. There's a certain way to share those kinds of experiences that doesn't diminish their value. Correct. Correct. Like even when, when a person comes to me for, for a healing session, especially, you know, for a first time client, the last thing I say to them is, do people know that you're here? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, they're really, you know, people really want to know. I'm like, don't share anything. Keep yeah. this to yourself because this is your experience and only you will understand what you just went through. Upon sharing, that person is going to try and reinterpret it for you. They're going to try to judge it. They're going right. to dissect it for you. And then all that power is going to go away and you're going to believe their words rather than your own. So as far as like a person's experience or um, this journey, it's a, it's a solo journey. And if you can find someone in your life that can get it, um, that's a partner, great, or a friend. But my suggestion is to really keep these experiences personal. Mm, yeah, I agree. And I've struggled with that. And it's funny because just saying that, it's like I could, I could share like an experience I've had <laughs> that taught me that lesson, but I don't really feel called to share it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> then you shouldn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not for now. It's not for now. <laughs> You mentioned how she teaches us how to die and how to live and how it's ultimately you know, the death of our egos. Now, the word ego is a word that people probably hear thrown around a lot in spiritual communities. For someone who doesn't really quite understand what that means, what does it mean to you? The death of our egos. As human beings, we need ego. We, I, I feel that we really can't go through life without it. But it is looking for the validation, looking for the acceptance. Like if a person in your world or you or someone listening, if you have to start every sentence with the word I, that's your ego. Let's take a step back and understand I should be listening to that person rather than trying to talk about myself. Mm. That's a really good first step of understanding your ego. If a person is talking, are you in your mind thinking, okay, I want to one-up that person. I want to try to tell them about my experience rather than listening and honoring their experience. If that person has stopped talking and within seconds you're like, well, I, that's the ego. Yeah, of course, yeah, I mean, there's going to be times and conversations where that's, you know, totally fine, but that's the first way of identifying where you're coming from in reference to the ego. You know, the death of the ego, I mean, it's different for every person, but it, it's a very powerful experience, a very humbling experience. I think that a person who can really be in a good relationship with their ego is someone who listens, someone who honors other people, another person's feelings and emotions, and that it, and it's not about you. I like that you said good relationship with the ego because it's really often too that it seems people just want to get rid of it and it's just all about getting rid of it, killing it, being done with it forever. But no, no. you said a good relationship with it. Absolutely. There's no, we, we can't function without our egos. We need our ego in order to walk through life. It's having a good relationship, a healthy relationship with your ego and not a toxic one. And how can that happen? I gave you a couple examples, but it's different for everybody. And 
to, I don't think I've found that perfect answer for that question just yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably different all the time, too. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Why is it so important that we are able to have the death of our egos and have a good relationship to it? Because there's probably people who'd hear this and be like, I don't see like why this matters. So I don't see how this affects anything. But it does. You and I know it does. <laughs> <laughs> but what would you say to people who they do not see at all how, how it's important? So say a person who's listening right now everything in your life is constantly going wrong. Everything in your life is, you're constantly getting sick, that you feel like you have a tremendous amount of bad luck, that you, you have unhealthy relationships, that you, you constantly can't get ahead or one step forward. You're always taking one step back. Check in with that ego and understand, all right, well, how am I looking at myself in the world, in the big picture. And, and looking at this beautiful person and being like, it's, I gotta take a step back sometimes to take a step forward. If you have a, an unhealthy relationships, I mean, there's many different factors to that and many different reasons, but since we're talking about the ego, what are you contributing to those relationships that are making them unhealthy? The ego wants to say, it's not me. It's the other person, but it's always a 50-50 problem or solution that we have to take ownership sometimes of our own mistakes and look at them as beautiful and a teaching rather than a victim. And that can play into all these different aspects of your life. And if, if you're constantly in a, in a bad place, look at your ego and if you can change certain aspects of your ego to approach these different aspects of, of your life and different issues and problems, most likely things are going to kind of clear up for you and, and feel much better. Not everyone is going to be willing to do something like go to an extreme, like take the plant medicine ayahuasca in the Peruvian jungle in order to do that. <laughs> Why not? Everybody should. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's. What are some small ways that people can do this on a daily basis? How can we better, first of all, see the impact of our egos? And then what can we do about it? What are some small things we can do? Beautiful things. Beautiful things in your life. like Beautiful things. And I, what I mean by that is helping those around you. Strangers. That is, acts of kindness go such a long way. They really do. <laughs> and sometimes I got to check in with myself too. Yeah, you yeah. know, we live in New Jersey. It's a very crowded place. People drive like crazy. People don't <laughs> open doors. People don't get eye contact. You know, if I'm in a park or in the woods here in New Jersey, very different experiences from other parts of the, the world, you know, where say you're on a path, there's a person approaching you. Here in New Jersey, that person's gonna look down and they're gonna pretend that you don't exist. If you're in upstate New York, that person is waving at you and saying hi, like 50 feet away. So I make it a point to, to look at that person and say, hello. If I'm in traffic and there's someone trying to get in and the five cars in front of me wouldn't let this person in, I'm going to let them in. Man, woman, child, whoever you are, if I'm walking into the post office or a store, I'm going to hold that door for you. Random acts of kindness help so much. And it can go on and on and on and on and on. That's one way. Meditation. If you can incorporate it or do even a few minutes of meditation a day that can really help as well 
being as mindful and kind as possible and compassionate to people really is my key to life. Doing stuff like that, I find, is so beautiful because then you feel really good. You're like, you know what, hey, it wasn't about me. It was about helping my brother, helping my sister, helping this grandmother, helping this grandfather. Volunteering, doing community service work, offering your service to other people. That is, in my opinion, some of the best things that you could possibly do to have a good relationship with your ego because if you are making it about another person and, and helping those out in need that really helps what about for people who don't feel like they have something to offer oh that's that's bullshit everybody <laughs> has something everybody has something to offer volunteering or doing a, a good act of kindness to somebody every human being in this world can do you're you're saying no matter how much pain we're in no matter what's going on in our lives there are others out there that can benefit from our help. Absolutely. Absolutely. When it comes to health, and you mentioned the diet, why do you think health is so important? Because there are probably plenty of people who are really interested in spirituality or they're really interested in shamanism or interested in just being a better person, but they might not have the best lifestyle themselves. Why is that important? A lot of my clients that I work with are young men in recovery from drugs, alcohol, addiction, gambling, sex. There's something within a person who is in that dark place of the world that within their soul that finds that power within them to finally have that aha moment of, yeah, I could help myself by making myself healthier by living a healthy lifestyle, by living a compassionate lifestyle. And all these beautiful people that I work with that I've seen on these journeys of finding God, of finding spirit, of finding a higher awakening or a power that they realize, holy crap, there's there's something bigger than, than me, but I can't quite understand or, or, or comprehend it but I'm gonna believe in this. I'm gonna believe in me and live this healthier lifestyle. I'm going to no longer do heroin. I'm no longer gonna drink alcohol. By focusing on your health, and I'm sure scientifically there's stats and statistics and reasons for it that I'm unaware of, but it feeds our mind and it feeds our soul. And our mind is our most powerful thing. It's our most powerful organ. It's our most powerful tool. And if we could change our thoughts and eliminate the certain toxins within our life, whether it be what we are ingesting or what we are doing or what we're exposing ourselves to, is key to living a healthy lifestyle to be able to move forward spiritually. So many people that I that you know that our students or, or clients or friends that you know they come and they're like you know it's not happening uh, I mean I can't I'm not having this spiritual awakening and I'm like well, you're <laughs> trying too hard stop stop <laughs> trying so much I'm like what are you doing to to do these beautiful acts of kindness did you go plant a tree recently no did you go water a tree recently no we'll go do that Go hug a tree, go feed a tree, go feed a plant, then come back to me. It's so simple. We as human beings try to make it too difficult. And stress, stress, stress is number one. I personally, my motto, I don't give a fuck. I don't <laughs> give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about anything. 
if I worry too much, it's just going to cause stress. It's going to cause pain. It's going to cause chaos. Any of your listeners and you, if you could look at these periods of your life where you thought that nothing was ever going to get better and that you were you were in this dark place or something tragic happened, look at yourself today and it all cleared up. It all went away. It all, it all turned out okay. I've learned that I just don't care. You know, hey, if I have a bill that's due and I don't have the funds for it, yeah, I'm just going to stop stressing about it. It always turns up. I find that living a stress-free life as much as possible is the most important aspect to my life as a human being. Don't stress about being too stress free, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you said people, a lot of people will be asking you, hey, when am I having this awakening? It's not happening. And you're saying, well, when was the last time you did something kind for somebody? When was the last time you planted a tree? I find it very common, and I've been guilty of this too. Putting spiritual experiences or just higher experiences whatever you'd like to call it on a pedestal and seeing it as something separate from just everyday life and it's like you said before even after certain experiences it can be very hard to integrate back into the world you know and i think of it i think of it the same way as how you described i'm like just trying to focus you know one day at a time maybe just try and have a good handshake or just try and give someone my presence just get outside just pet my cat Mm -hmm. how do you think people can better do that like sort of stop putting experiences like big experiences on a pedestal and recognize the sacredness in everyday life follow your instincts and if if someone's coming to your mind like a, a friend or someone you haven't talked to in a while call that person reach out to them because there's a reason most of the time if if a person that pops in my head i'll just be like you know what i gotta call this person or i have to send them an email or whatever it may be the person is usually like oh my god i i really needed to hear from you and it's not about me i'm just like all right well how are you how is life how are you feeling what do you need to talk about and that is food for the soul, listening to others and honoring other people. That grounds me, that helps me, that really puts things in perspective about my life. Having another person open up, because sometimes people in our life have no one to talk to, have no one to share certain experiences with. And I find that allowing or reaching out to a person that may not have that particular outlet to somebody is more meaningful to that person than you than you realize yeah sometimes you have no idea how what you're doing is perceived by others correct we can be the most fucked up people in the world but hey you know there's always you really have no idea (laughs) exactly i teach a lot of classes and do a lot of seminars and different things of that nature and and as you and many of your listeners may have also been attendees of different things, and there's always that one person that is very talkative. Meanwhile, everybody in the room is, you know, looking at me being like, shut this person up. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? This might be the only opportunity this person has in their life for someone to hear them. So I honor that and I respect that. Yeah, they might be kind of going off topic and 
may be talking about things that have nothing to do with that moment and I may reel that person in, but I, I honor them and I let them speak. I don't shut them up because for some people, no one in their world listens and it's so important to allow that person or a person to be heard because so many people in, in life today aren't heard and I find that to be a very powerful, valuable experience to allow someone to have. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'm thinking of people I know right now. <laughs> and I'm sure <laughs> we could all think of many, many people. <laughs> and you know, that person might be challenging, but you know, why are they challenging to you? What are they what are they bringing up within you? What are they mirroring? Everything's a teaching, everything is a lesson. Instead of trying to run away from that person, be like, well, I'm going to figure out what is this person triggering within me that I need to go deeper and analyze. The criticism I've gotten for even thinking about this kind of stuff is people say stuff they're like, dude, this world has so many big problems right now. I don't have the time to think about my listening skills or just random acts of kindness. And I think we're all individual people. If I'm always focused on making some sort of big difference really far away, I'm ignoring all the things I can be doing right in front of me. And that was a place I felt like I was in for a long time. And maybe something I still struggle with, I'm still trying to deal with. I could be spending a lot of time reading books, or I could just do the dishes, or pet my cat, or take my sister mm -hmm. out to lunch. We spend all this time focused on ourselves, but there's a lot we can do for others. It's like you said before when you wanted to, you know, a clear mind is so important. Our mind is our most important organ. And I could spend all day scrolling through my newsfeed or scrolling down Reddit, reading about all the political turmoil, but I don't. I mean, I'm not going to run away from it if that's what someone wants to talk to me about. But for the most part, I'm focused on trying to do the best I can with what I have. Absolutely. This world right now, yeah, I mean, it's changing and there's things happening that we may or may not disagree with or agree with. But sometimes things have to happen for a reason. Yeah. What's happening right now, if we can look 10, 15, 20 years from now, that it might actually make something even better, then it's worth struggling through this right now. That's an idea that has gotten me, that has lost some friends <laughs> that, <laughs> when I've said that kind of thing. I might not agree with everything that's going on, and I don't even like to bring politics into stuff like this, but yeah. I'm just kind of seeing what's going on in the world and and the shifts that are happening right now, all within a very short period of time. And it's really beautiful actually to, to witness. Yeah, it's affecting a lot of people and, I, and that hurts and I don't like to see that, but it's interesting to see how quick that one decision can affect millions of people. But if we can look at the bigger picture, at how that is going to change society and change our world and oh, change it's already things. changing so much so much i mean look I at how empowered people are being right now everyone is suddenly cares about everything mm -hmm. in a good way i mean I, it's like activism is popping up all over the place i just reposted an article today on how sex doesn't sell anymore activism does now and that like <laughs> companies like starbucks are now using that and i mean it, it's like one thing, you know, to use for material gain, but either way, I think that's beautiful. And it's just amazing. It's like it started as rage, people just being angry, but I think it's going to quickly turn into something more when people realize, and I think they're already starting to realize that the rage doesn't get us anywhere. Instead, we have to say, okay, like, I hate this. I don't want this. Well, what do I want? And it's from all sides. All sides are going to learn from this. All sides are going to shift and change. I'm kind of excited about what's going on. I don't, you know, yeah. necessarily, I mean, <laughs> you know, like it or, you know, it definitely affects me on many different levels of my life. But 
I really can't stress or worry about it. I'm just gonna continue living my life and being there for people as much as I possibly can. You know, and I read and I listen and I watch and you know, I'm as informed about what's going on in the world as, as I allow myself to be. I think this is a very important period in our history and our time that we need to go through. Yeah, I completely agree. Too many people have been asleep for too long. It's so beautiful to see people in my life coming awake, coming alive, believing in something, standing for something, having their voice heard. That's power. For all different things too, whether it's LGBT rights, the environment, it's all sorts of stuff. It's like there's something everyone cares about and can get involved in, and it's all coming to this culmination so quickly. It's, I think it's cool, but I also I do try to recognize and have compassion for the people who are going through that rough stuff. Not everyone's going to see it right away. For a lot of people, they're just seeing it as unnecessary pain. And I try to be compassionate towards that, but it's, you know, we forget sometimes. Yes. And like I said earlier, in a couple years or even months from now, that if you could look at this and realize that in, in a period of time, it's going to be okay. That you're going to be okay. It might suck right now, but eventually you're going to be in a good place. And hold on to that. Hold on to the positive action that may happen what do you see in store for our future as a planet as a species i really i have no idea <laughs> no visions <laughs> no visions I, I i i really don't know how to answer that i see our future and our world being more about the people and the people taking control rather than being controlled right that's the way i look at this the voices that people are generating and birthing within themselves are going to create lots of things for our future whether it be a spiritual practice whether it be a political party whether it be human rights there's there's a lot of birthing happening right now and it's really important we are experiencing the birth of something miraculous and like ayahuasca, we have to get through the muck, we have to get through mm. the pain, we have to get through the hurt to get through that door of a beautiful life. Right now, I think that this is a really important time because something is being birthed. What it is, I don't know, but it is important. Well, that concludes the third and final part with shamanic practitioner Alvaro Romeo. If you enjoyed it, you can contact him on his website, which I am totally blanking out on the name of right now. I think it's, if you just search NJ Shaman in Google, yeah, yeah, shamansdawn.com, njshaman.com, you'll find him. And you can contact him, have a conversation. He's more than willing to talk to and help people. And if you would like to talk to me, feel free to shoot me an email at theconsciousvibe at gmail.com. Find me on Facebook. 
probably the best way to get in touch with me is through YouTube or the Facebook group, the Conscious Vibe Tribe. If you would like to submit your music, send that to my email as well. Just get involved in whatever way you can. Send us art. Send us links to interesting people. Just have a conversation. Just get stuff going, and we'll make it awesome. Until next time, now I keep saying stay conscious, but that almost sounds like a gimmick right now. (laughs) So just have a good day.